scripture I <clears throat> did not uh, mention to you I would like uh, Monday Monday night 
about 11.59 p.m. to fast yes. until 12 noon Monday. And we're going to ask you for those 12 hours to do a complete fast and make sure you sing at least three sincere prayers. 11.59, Monday night, that's that one minute from that would be Tuesday morning at 12 o'clock. I don't want y'all to get your time mixed up. And you fast, you be sleeping most of the time, so the fast should not be too tough. And make sure that you find time to say at least three sincere prayers. At least three sincere prayers. Amen. Get a quiet uh, round of applause. You know, I think that we all can admit some guilt that we are not doing all that we can for the Lord. Sometime our agenda get kind of a selfishly develop and the abundance of the thoughts is on me, my thing, my success, my pain, my way. The Bible teaches us don't exalt yourself more higher than you ought to. That's somewhere in Book of Romans, but think soberly. When we get too top heavy, we're thinking more or less like a drunk person. But think soberly. From Psalms uh, 116 is where we would take our text from Psalms 100. And 16, the 116th Psalms. Amen. And uh, if you have that, I want to start reading the text at verse 12. Verse 12 says, What shall I render? unto the Lord for all his benefits yes. toward me. Yes. I would take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Yes. I would pay my vows unto the Lord. Yes. Now in the presence of all his people. Mm -hmm. Thus is the reading of our text. I have kind of an old fashioned subject. I ain't done enough. Let me hear you say that. Let me say this first. I, I'm not trying to intimidate your education, but I just got this feeling. I ain't done enough. I ain't done enough. Say that again. I ain't done enough. I ain't done enough. Amen. Now that word ain't, I don't be too afraid of it. It's used in some areas of our nation and it is a contraction of I am not. I am not. 
and we're using it for a subject I ain't done enough. Yeah, I have not done enough. I have not done enough. And here in this rich passage of scripture, this psalm writer raises the question, what shall I render unto the Lord for all the benefits that I have received from him. That's a great question. What shall I render? What shall I do? What shall I give to the Lord for all the benefits that I have received from him? The text is not saying uh, if others behave according to my expectation, then I may figure out what I should render unto the Lord for all the benefits. I have already gotten. You know, many people get kind of caught up with others between them and the Lord. You know, the them or the people or the person does not have blessings for you. They may be nice guys, they may look good, they may dress fine. But they cannot bless you, they cannot bring a troubled mind to a peaceful state. much as the counselors had counseled with us. And when my significant one, the apple of my eye, the one I specially love, when they go south on us, can't nobody mend a broken heart. Nobody but the Lord. This ain't new to hardly nobody here. All right. You done been through Lonesome Valley. All right, come on. Come on. And you thought your world was coming to an end. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, But God moved on the way on your behalf and allowed you to get through that troubled water. And some of us learned later on that we got rid of what was no good to us, which gave opportunity for us to get better. God is somebody, but the question is, what should I render to him for benefits that he has sent my way? You know, when I thought about this scripture, I said to myself, I ain't done enough yet. And I don't think a day go by when I'm not doing something in reference to the Lord. But even in that, I could do more. 
I ain't doing enough. And you know some folk, they have already mapped out their plans and moved the Lord on the back burners of their agenda. The first we make requests to four things and the last one that we raise the question what can I render to you for what you've already done? The psalm writer here says is I will uh, Rend unto the law for all of his benefits, I would take the cup of salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord. And another passage in the book of Psalms, I was entering to the gates with thanksgiving. I will be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord has been good to me. The cup of salvation, that word salvation means saved. And I would think that everybody in the church have had an experience of being saved. We're saved from the penalty of sin and saved from the eternity of hell. You know that's a great blessing. Y'all got so quiet on, on that time, but let me say, you know you done raised enough hell <laughs> that God could justify sending us to hell. But the question is, what should I render unto him for the benefits that he has already provided me with? What should I do for the Lord? Did anybody wake up this morning? You was in such a big rush, you forgot to pray. You just came on out. And now watching your watch. And hope that the preacher don't stand too long. I have not kept all of my vows and all of my promises that I have made to the Lord. When I came to him, I promised him I would serve him until I die. I, I promise that to the Lord. I stood before the congregation when I was asked, will I do the best I can to serve him, to do his will, to love his church, to outreach for the lost? But so much get between us and the Lord and we can't do it. I have not, not have always behaved Christ-like in the presence of his people. I often hear people say I would perform much better in the Lord's house and they put a conjunction in there, but If she was not in there or he was not in there, I would do my best. I would go to church, but rare is going to be preaching that some going to hurt me. I'm almost through preaching already. Come on now. I have not always behaved Christ-like in the presence of his people. There have been times when I have allowed the people in the Lord's house to pull 
or to push or some way or another to bring the ugly out of me. There have been times when I use wrong language in the Lord's house. Yes, sir. Didn't nobody else hear me but the Lord. Well, that's the main one that you need to be concerned about. Psalms 22, 5 says, We cried unto the Lord in trouble, times of trouble, and he delivered us from our trouble. I remember years back when my mom and dad was doing the best uh, that they could. We were living in the West End part of the city where everybody in the West End, there were three things that you had that you never paid for that you wish you didn't have. That was roaches, mice, and rats. And I remember back then, families would declare war on the pests that was troubling them. And those three-story buildings were only simply, when you put that DDT down, we didn't know that was killing the folk more so than the, than the rats and the roaches, but they would run upstairs. And they were high in Sister Emma's house. I don't mean no harm to nobody. <laughs> I'm just using the name to use a name. And when sister that lived upstairs do her spring, they go back downstairs. So you could never get rid of them. But you know the Lord some way and somehow brought uh, he, he brought uh, renewal in the West End and allowed us to acquire houses and buildings that did not have roaches and rats. Ain't the Lord all right? Some vote now, if others discover that you have a roach in your house, you become embarrassed. Can I get an amen? You ain't got to be quiet on that. The Lord provided for us food and shelter. We didn't have too much. Aggressive landlords was evicting folk who could not pay the rent. No leniency, no time extended for you to find the money to pay. But somehow, some way, if we was evicted, the Lord allowed us to find another place. I ain't done enough for the benefits that he has provided me with. Made my body well when I was sick. And if I had got caught with some of the stuff I had done, and you too, I would have got locked up in jail. Can anybody say amen? amen? But the Lord protected us from incarceration. What shall I render to the Lord for all the benefits that he has brought my way. We ain't doing enough, y'all. Woke me up every day of this year. You know, some folk don't never think it. For the last night lying down, God watched over them all night long. They woke up early as though the Lord was supposed to allow them to wake up. Never said, thank you for waking me up 
Thank you for allowing me to sleep. Thank you for my health and my strength. Thank you for my mind being in shape. We ain't doing enough, y'all. We ain't doing enough. And when we thought we was old enough to do whatever we wanted to do, God looked at us with an eye of pity and called his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, sent him to our sin cursed world. And said to folk, if you can just believe, God will wipe away all of your sins. If you can just believe, he'll wash away all the lies that we have told. If you can believe, he will erase those bad marks that we have on our immorality record. If we can just believe, he will forgive us for cheating and trying to gain stuff the wrong way. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God sent him down here to planet Earth. Carl Atkins was not in the shape to get himself to a heavenly abode. Did not have the power to erase bad marks off of my record. Did not have the ability to extend my longevity of life. Was not able to keep my mind in a sane state with all of the obstacles that I had to deal with. But thank God for Jesus, his only begotten son that he sent down here on earth to a place called Calvary, Golgotha's Hill, a place of a skull. It was on Calvary where he died for my sin. Didn't he die? He died that I might have a right to eternal life. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. I got the message now. I ain't done enough for you. Sometimes I cheat you on my time. Sometimes I, I refuse to do your will. Sometimes I, I ask you for a favor. And I promise you that I would do better. But after I get my favor, I don't do any better. Thank you, Lord. I ain't doing enough for you. Give me another opportunity. Give me another chance. Help me out when I'm being challenged by the evil one. Pray that you will fix me so I can 
can survive the aggression of the adversary. I know you are able to help me through the valley and the shadow of death. You can do what no other power is able to do. I want to do more. I need your help. I want to give more of my mind because you allowed me to get an education. I want to do more with my body, my feet, and my hands because you allowed my physical health to keep on keeping on. I want to do more to comfort somebody that are troubled and tell them how you delivered me from my trouble. Give me another chance, another opportunity. I'm accessible, I'm available, I'm here for you. You can use me if you need somebody. Here am I. Send me. Send me. Psalm 105, speaking about the Israelites, that God gave Israel land that was owned by the heathen. That's the kind of God that we serve. He will give you the desires of your heart. Yes, sir. It all starts with receiving him yes. as your personal savior. Yes. Yes. And Jesus' visit with Nicodemus said, I must be saved again. Yes. And then he said that God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, yes. but have everlasting life. We're going to extend the invitation at this time for membership. And if you ain't done enough, the starting place is becoming a member of his kingdom. The invitation is extended to whomever wants it. Whosoever will, let him or her come. Let us all stand, please. Let me.
There may be some in here that are currently in college. I just want you to stand wherever you are. Uh, we want to pray for you too. That wasn't on part of the program. You're currently going to college. All right. Any others? Okay. As the musician plays, as I pray verbally, I ask the rest of us to pray silently for all of these candidates, all of these uh, graduates, I should say. Eternal, everlasting Father, we come first to give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon these graduates as they take the next step in life. Pray that you will equip them so that their strength we sustain them from the challenges of the adversary. I wish we could say to all of these graduates from high school and those from college, college, you will be commencing to your professional work, high school to college. No matter where we go from here, the Lord will be with you if you be with him. Satan will always be somewhere trying to trip you up, trying to encourage you to do the wrong thing. Satan will tell you you won't be able to make it. Satan will tell you that you won't be able to obtain a good paying job. But wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Got to be very careful of advancement of other people before you succumb to their wish. First find out what their motive is so that you won't get sucked in an ungodly experience. Remember the words of Paul. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Eternal Father, pray that thou would touch every graduate that is up here. We claim a mighty victory, not only in college, but victory in life, and victory in courtship, victory in marriage, victory in doing the right thing. We claim it in Jesus' name. Praise him. Lead us in that deacon key. Yes, sir. Pray.
sustain them uh -huh. and give them victory yes. as we bless the food and pray and do the benediction yes. eternal father pray that thou will bless the refreshments oh, yes. that we're about to receive yes, Lord. for nourishment and strength of our bodies yes. now may the love of God grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus who is the Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again let us all sing together this is a few things about our church Golden Lee Baptist Church is a Bible believing church it is a church of common and concerned people when everybody is somebody, a church with a vision for ministry and religious education. And I do pray that the Word of God is as important to you as it is to us. For John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 teaches us that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 of that same chapter speaks of Christ. It says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we 